So with this, we uh, come to the next talk of this contributed session, which uh, will be given by Ivan Leon, uh, Leon uh, and he will uh, tell us about quasi-phase reduction of all-to-all -all strongly coupled limit cycle oscillators near incoherent states. And I see he's already switched on his video. So uh, uh, Ivan, you're welcome to start your talk. Hello, thank you. Hey, good afternoon. Well, I'm Ivan Leon, and I'm going to speak or to present quasi-phase reduction of all-to-all -all strongly coupled limit cycle oscillators near incoherent states, a work that I have done with Diego Paso. So the idea is that we, when we are working with dynamical com or dynamical system, complex system in general, we are interested in one of the most useful techniques is reduction method, because basically they keep or they capture the fundamental feature of this system and they neglect all others that we are not interested in. In oscillatory dynamics or in oscillatory media, we, one of the most powerful methods is phase reduction. Uh, basically, because it transforms, it will have an um, n-dimensional oscillator um, by using phase reduction, we're able to reduce it to one-dimensional oscillator, one-dimensional phase oscillator. Thus, we pass from a system of n oscillators and this um, to a n-dimensional system. That is an enormous dimensional reduction, basically. The idea of phase reduction is used that is the coupling between oscillator is small, so we do a, what we is done a perturbative uh, theory is done uh, with this small parameter. It has phase reduction has give us an enormous successes, like for example the description of, of synchronization of of the synchroniz synchronization transition from uniform coherent state to, to synchronization, basically. But the problem is that as it is um, a perturbation theory, it fails when the coupling is not so small enough. But the, uh, although this is this fail that this the phase, the phase reduction doesn't describe these some states, there are, there are still some states that are phase describable. I mean, but by phase describable, some states where the oscillator rotates on top of a closed curve. So a uh, phase, we are able to describe, to define a phase. So, so in some way, there is uh, some phase behavior. That's why we here present quasi-phase reduction for global couple oscillator. We want to keep this phase uh, behavior, but uh, not keeping all the degrees of freedom. Instead of considering that the coupling is small, what we are going to do is to, to do is uh, suppose that the mean field is the small quantity that we know we need, and thus and then and then quasi phase reduction is going to be valid near incoherent states. We can apply this quasi phase reduction to a big uh, an enormous variety of of oscillator, but in order not to get lost in the in in notation, I'm going to apply it to a Stuart Landau oscillator. Stuart Landau oscillator, oscillator basically is the normal form of the whole bifurcation. So they are a general form of oscillation. Here C2 is what is called non, -iso in non isochronicity parameter. And this system presents a limit cycle that is the oscillator basically at a modulus A equal one. As I said before, we don't want just one oscillator, but an ensemble of them, of them, and we want it to be coupled. We co couple this oscillator, this is Stuart Landau oscillator, uh, diffusively. Here, the epsilon is the couple, strength coupling, C1 is the reactivity of the coupling, and this bar A is the mean field, as defined here. This is another way of writing, this is basically the mean field complex given on the equation because it's the, co the complex given on the equation, but instead of with a diffusive of Laplacian, we have a, a, the mean field version of this diffusion. In order to do our quasi phase reduction, it will be useful to do a small chain of variable. Basically, we rescale the coupling, the time, and the, and the complex variable A, and we go to a rotating frame, and we rewrite our equation in this form. Uh, what I'm saying is now, if the coupling kappa is small or is zero, just the data are going to be uncoupled. But also, if the if the mean field is zero, oscillators are going to behave as as uncoupled. 
this state that has zero mean pillar, the incoherent state, and we can classify it in two types. One is one is uniform incoherent state in which oscillator phases are uniformly distributed, and the other are non-uniform incoherent states where uh, oscillator phases are not uniformly distributed. And in order to do the phase reduction, one of the main concepts is the concept of phase. Basically, it's easy to describe, to define a phase over the limit cycle, uh, but you have to extend it not only to the limit cycle, but to the whole basin of reduction. Here is when we use uh, isochrons that basically attribute to every point the phase that is going, going to be the asymptotic phase that going to, it, it is going to have. For the Stuart-Landau oscillator, these isochrons are very easy to compute at this formula of here, and they relate the phase with the angle and the radial variable. And here we see that, it, that C2 measures how much the isochron deviates from radial lines. That, that is why it is called non-isochronicity parameter. So now what we want to do is do the, the reduction, the quasi phase reduction. The first, po the first step that we have to do is change from complex variable to polar variable, basically to phases and to actual general variable. Here we have, I have uh, redefined the mean field as B and the constant alpha, alpha prime, eta, and eta prime depend on C1 and C2. But we want, this is, this is, this, pair of equations are still a sad, so we want to do some reduction in some way. And the idea is to, we are going to consider that the oscillator are going to be near the limit cycle. This is going to happen if the coupling kappa is small or if the mean field is, is near zero. So we do this, uh, we tell our span basically our equation, and we keep only the first order in the equation of the phases. And we obtain this equation. The pro but this equation is still not closed because here we have to introduce some value of the mean field B but to compute it, we need to know the value of R, the radial variable. So we need to eliminate it in some way. If we were doing a traditional phase reduction, well, traditional phase reduction, what it does is basically assume that the coupling is small. Then we can approximate this mean field B by the Kuramoto or the, the Kuramoto or the parameter. And if we apply it to our previous equation, what we obtain is the Kuramoto Sakaguchi model. There's something that is known that the phase reduction of mean field complex lambda equation is the Kuramoto Sakaguchi model. It is very, it is able to describe the, the uniform transition from uniform coherent state to, uh, to synchrony, but there is still some problems. Like for example, it is not able to describe non-uniform uniform coherent state or quasi-periodic partial synchrony that are present in the mean field complex lambda equation. That's why we want to extend it to quasi-phase reduction. In quasi-phase reduction, the idea is, okay, we are not going to approximate this mean field B by, we are not going to approximate it. We are, we are going to give, give, to give it some the dynamics. Basically, we can compute the dynamics of this mean field B by averaging our equation for the oscillator, and then this A becomes B, but we have still this term of here. And we have to compute it in some way to approximate it, basically. But if we use that the radial variable or the oscillator are near the limit cycle, we can tailor expand it, it this term. And we now will have to, well, we approximate it like this, but we still need to compute this term here, delta R, delta R e to i theta. But we have, we can, if we do the same with the mean field, we obtain a relationship between this delta R set and B. That it is this of here. We can plug this into this equation and in the equation of before, and we obtain the quasi-phase reduced model. Basically, this equation for the phases is the equation that we obtained before that depends on B. But now the B is not compute, but is it depends, it's a dynamical variable that depends that is whose dynamics is given by this other equation. I want to do some remarks about this equation. The first of all is that uh, this question for the reduction, well, this is the, first, the main result of our work, and the, it's an enormous reduction because uh, at the beginning we have a system with two n, two n degrees of freedom, two bar for each oscillator, but now we have n plus two degrees of freedom, n of the phases and two because the b is a complex variable. As we haven't used the the 
that the that kappa is a small parameter uh, this mo this reduction is going to be able to uh, for any kappa provided that the modulus of b of the mean field is small but in addition if we assume that the that the coupling kappa is small the we recover the kuramoto sakaguchi model because this basically if a kappa is small b is going to tend to is going to go to z and then we obtain the kuramoto sakaguchi model and the detail is that if this model, this quasi reduced model, resembles dynamical quorum sensing, in which oscillator doesn't interact with each other, but interact through a medium. In this case, it will be the mean field region. What we're going to do now that we have the quasi reduced model is to check that this is correct and understand better some features of the, of the exact, exact system. To check it, Basically, we do simulation for the mean field complex view and the equation, the exact system, and the first order approximation. We initi initialize the system in this state here, basically more random initial condition in a circle, and in a parameter space where the uniform incoherent state is stable. What we see is that both the exact and the approximation decay to the uniform incoherent state in basically the same way with the same frequency, nice. Now we initialize it, but in a point in parameter space where the, where the uniform incoherent state is unstable. Then when, what we see is that initially they behave the, the same way, but both of them go away from uniform incoherent state. But when the, uh, the mean field gets big, the approximation fails. That's something that we expect because of the, this approximation, is, this reduction is only valid when the mean field is small. But you can see that even if it is more or less big, it's described very well the frequency. So now that we have our, we have checked the validity of our model, what we can do is as the quasi phase reduction is valid near incoherent state, we are able to compute exactly and analytically the stability boundaries of this incoherent state. Here I have plot um, a phase diagram of the complex Euler Landau landau equation, the complex wait, sorry. Uh, where we have plot cap and C1, the two parameters. And here in the yellow region, we see that the uniform incoherent state is stable. It lost stability in the black tree in the black line, and the red gradient, non-uniform incoherent state are stable. I want you to mark that uh, these lines were already computed for the mean field complexity on the equation, but it's very complicated to do it, and using our method, it's quite more, it's more easy, easier, basically. But in addition, to compute the stability under the lines, a quasi reduction allows us to understand better this non-uniform coherent state. Basically, to keep clear, to maintain everything clear, non-uniform coherent states are states that whose mean field or who, or who where a motor the parameter is zero, but the other harmonic in a way of Daido Kura motor the parameter are not zero. We have applied our quasi-phase reduction to a wide variety of systems, and we have seen or we can prove that non-uniform incoherent states are a general feature. It is stable and, and is a, a feature that appears, a state that appears in a lot of oscillator systems in couple in different ways. But not only that, we can compute the stability, the stability boundaries of the stability of these states. And we can show that for a wide variety of systems, these non-uniform coherent states, the stability only depends on the modulus of the second or the Kuramoto either the parameter. That was it was represented in this gradient. The color marks the value of Q that is unstable. Uh, well, here I have shown, uh, like just like for showing that uh, it's something that can be extended to more extent to a bigger variety, we have used non a non-linear couple, also store land oscillator, but non-linearly coupled, and we can compute the stability boundary lines for the incoherence and non, uh, non for the uniform incoherent state and the non-uniform incoherent state, and this line were were unknown. This system were used in some papers, but uh, it's very complicated to compute this line using the exact system, but using your quasi free reduction, it's quite straightforward to compute it. And we have here again that the presence of a non-uniform incoherent state. Now, this is a perturbation theory, and we have computed the first order 
the first or the perturbation. But we would like to have an exact or a systematic way to do the perturbation. The problem is that going to the next order is not trivial. Basically, because the small quantity that you're considering is the mean field that is dynamic. But we can go to the next order if we assume that the coupling is a small. It's a bit not cumbersome, but it's not very interesting. But what basically, what if you go to the next order, you add this perturbation to the equation of the phases. And now what we, we can compare this second order approximation with the first order approximation. What we do is simulate the system, the exact, the first order approximation and the second order approximation in a point, in a parameter point in the parameter space where the uniform incoherence state is, is unstable. That we saw before that the first order quasi first reduction fails. We can see here that, well, first of all, I'm going to describe what happens with the mean field complex given on the equation. Basically, a, a uniform incoherence state is unstable, so it goes away. It spends some time near a saddle point that is a quasi period partial synchronous, that it's a saddle, and then it decays to a non uniform incoherence state. Here it has R0, but the Q, the second, the Kuremoto diode of the parameter, is not zero. If we see the first order quasi phase reduction, basically it's a start, it, it, it captures perfectly the, this growing, but it's, it goes to a synchronous state and it fails in this description at this point because the, basically the mean field is too weak. But the sort of second order uh, quasi phase reduction capture this growing, but also is able, is able to, describe, to capture the saddle point and also the decay into a non-uniform incoherent state. Before the conclusions, I want to to keep clear where where, where we can apply this phase quasi phase reduction. Basically, it can be applied very easily. Well, can be applied to lambda mega oscillator. That are these are oscillators that have rotational symmetry. Also, you can apply it to linear and non-linearly global decoupled. It doesn't matter if you break the symmetry of the oscillator, but it can but you can apply it. And also, if the oscillator has to be identical, and some extensions that we we think are interesting and doable is to extending extending the quasi ferric reaction to any kind of oscillator, to extending it to to new topologies like, for example, network oscillators. And also, very interesting is not considering the oscillator be identical, but consider that there are some heterogeneity between oscillators. Like for example, in the frequency of the oscillator. The conclusion that I want to you to, to keep basically is that we have presented here quasi very reduction that yields uh, n, n phases plus a complex variable. That is an enormous reduction, dynamical reduction. Also, it provides a new viewpoint to tackle oscillatory ensembles because it's a new tool to understand and to compute see, uh, important features of these systems, like, for example, the stability boundary lines, because it can compute uniform or non-uniform incoherent states, the stability boundary, sorry, much more easier than, much, much easier than all other, other methods, basically, or you can, can compute it. Uh, thank you very much. You can find the paper on the archive and if there is any questions. Thanks, Ivan, for the nice talk. Um, currently, I don't see any questions in the Q&A, but I would like to ask the participants, if you have questions, please post them there. Uh, or raise your hand. I will see this on the attendee list and uh, I can allow you to talk and ask your question yourself. Um, we still have a few minutes. So um, maybe one question uh, from myself. Um, when you go to the second order, I mean, the, uh, the, the results start uh, at least qualitatively matching um, the simulated uh, trajectories much better. Do you expect anything, anything uh, extraordinary to happen when you go to even higher orders, or is it just going to approach uh, the real trajectory 
uh, monotonically, basically, because sometimes uh, actually adding orders can make things worse and then it only gets better at even higher orders. But in this case, the jump from first to second seems to be quite strong. So what do, do you expect that you, there is anything useful in going to even higher orders? I think that if you go to higher order, there are some, there are some states that happen for bigger uh, kappa, bigger coupling, that our second order approximation cannot capture. But mm -hmm. if you go to, to third order, or if you do a systematic second order, because we have here, we were using that the coupling, the coupling kappa is small, if yes. you were able to do a exact second order quasi phase reduction, I think you, there are some states or some feature or behaviors that uh, this model will be able to to, de to describe much more better than this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes, I think there are qualitative uh, new behaviors in a third order or in a systematic second order, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we have one question from uh, Eve. Uh, maybe you can introduce yourself. I'll allow you to talk. Uh, please unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. I can also unmute you. Thanks. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. OK. Thank you. So I'm Ernest Mombrio. So I don't know if you can. If you can see me, I, would... I can't. <laughs> you can't, right? So, well, it doesn't matter. So, thank you, Ivan. It, it it was a very nice talk. So, I'm I'm very interested in the extension of the model for heterogeneous uh, oscillators. So, do you do you think that is there is there any phenomenon that you expect to see using that model that you don't see in the sakaguchi kuramoto model with uh, heterogeneous uh, frequencies that you can see in the lambda with Stewart and that you expect to to find using these using these um say second order yeah. or yeah. improved I, yeah. yeah i think that yeah. um, basically uh, i think well i have the idea that you can there is going to be new phenomena because in the same way that you were with the Kuramoto Sakaguchi model there are a lot of states like the new non-uniform and coherent state that are not present in the well that are non-uniform incoherent states are present in the in the exact system the mean field completely random equation but it's not but uh, Kuramoto Sakaguchi model is not able to describe it I think that they have to be some equivalent of this of this model, basically, of, yes, of this non-uniform equation state, but for in the case of heterogeneous oscillator. And it's something that we are working on. But yes, I really think there has to be new phenomena you are applying this heterogeneity. Right. Yeah, because for instance, in the in the in the work of of Strogatz and so there is a paper of Strogatz, and I don't remember who else, um, that shows that in the Lando Stewart with heterogeneity, you can find, say, you can find uh, a plethora of new states yeah. like chaos and, and. Yeah, the problem is the idea, so, but what the reaction is only going to be can only describe a state that are phase discoverable in some way. I mean, there are some states where the oscillators mix all together, and this is not going to be able to oh, exactly. So you have to be near the yeah. incoherence. Yeah, yeah. 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 OK. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Philip, you are um, you are a mute. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't see any other questions or raised hands. So if uh, that's not the case, then uh, thank you very much again, Ivan, for the talk. Um,